Hey folks, John Oliver here, ready to tackle another hot button issue. Today's topic, can undocumented immigrants vote in US elections? The short answer is no. Federal law makes it clear, voting in federal elections is for US citizens. Misinformation spreads faster than a Kardashian pregnancy announcement. Some claim voter fraud by non-citizens is tilting elections. But let's separate fact from fiction. The law is the law. It's illegal, plain and simple. No citizenship, no federal vote, end of story. All right, folks, let's talk about how America keeps its elections secure. Think of it like airport security. But instead of confiscating your oversized shampoo bottles, they're making sure only eligible voters cast ballots. First up, voter registration. You need to provide proof of citizenship, like a birth certificate or passport. It's your golden ticket to the voting booth. No ticket, no entry. States cross-check voter rolls with other government databases like the DMV and Social Security Administration. So there you have it, folks. America's got a pretty robust system in place to prevent illegal voting. Now let's move on to the next topic. Now let's address the elephant in the room, or should I say, the myth Terry in the voting booth. Some folks claim that non-citizen voting is rampant, swinging elections like a pendulum on a caffeine bender. But is there any truth to these claims? Spoiler alert, not really. Numerous studies by reputable organizations like the Brennan Center for Justice have debunked this myth. They found that cases of non-citizens voting are incredibly rare, like finding a unicorn riding a unicycle while juggling chainsaws. One study analyzed over a billion votes cast in various elections and found only 31 credible instances of non-citizen voting. That's right, folks. 31. You're more likely to be struck by lightning while winning the lottery on your birthday than to encounter a non-citizen illegally casting a ballot. So, why all the fuss? Well, sometimes fear and misinformation are more potent than facts. It's easier to believe in a shadowy conspiracy than to accept the reality that our elections are generally secure. Section 4, Republican Concerns and Proposed Solutions. Now it's no secret that Republicans have expressed concerns about voter fraud, including the possibility of non-citizens casting ballots. They argue that even a small number of illegal votes can tip the scales in close elections, and they've proposed various measures to tighten voter registration requirements. One common proposal is requiring voters to present photo ID at the polls. Think of it like getting carded at a bar, but instead of proving you're old enough to drink, you're proving you're eligible to vote. Proponents argue that it's a common-sense measure to prevent impersonation fraud. Another proposal is stricter voter ID laws requiring specific types of photo identification like driver's licenses or passports. Supporters say it's about ensuring only eligible voters are casting ballots, while opponents argue it disproportionately disenfranchises minority voters who may not have access to these forms of ID. The debate over voter ID laws is complex and often contentious, with valid arguments on both sides. It's important to approach this issue with nuance and avoid generalizations. Section 5, Local Elections, A Different Story. Now here's where things get a little interesting. While it's illegal for non-citizens to vote in federal elections, some local municipalities allow it in certain circumstances. That's right folks, you heard me correctly. In some places, non-citizens can have a say in local matters. For example, in San Francisco, non-citizen parents and guardians can vote in school board elections. The logic is that these individuals have a vested interest in the education of their children, even if they're not yet citizens themselves. Similarly, some towns in Maryland allow non-citizens to vote in municipal elections, arguing that they contribute to the community and should have a voice in local affairs. However, it's important to note that these instances are limited to specific local elections and don't apply to federal or state-level races. Section 6. The Big Picture, Ensuring Election Integrity. So, there you have it, folks. The issue of non-citizen voting is complex and often misunderstood. While it's true that some local elections allow for non-citizen participation, it's illegal under federal law to vote in federal elections if you're not a U.S. citizen. The safeguards in place like voter registration requirements and cross-checking of records make it incredibly difficult for non-citizens to vote illegally. Ultimately, ensuring election integrity is a shared responsibility. We all have a role to play in protecting the sanctity of our democracy. Section 7. Final Thoughts, Facts Over Fear-Mongering 
As we've seen, the notion of widespread non-citizen voting is largely a myth, debunked by numerous studies and experts. While isolated cases may occur, they're statistically insignificant and don't justify sweeping claims of rigged elections. It's crucial to approach this issue with nuance and avoid generalizations. Painting entire groups of people as a threat to democracy based on their immigration status is not only inaccurate but also harmful. Instead of resorting to fear-mongering and division, let's focus on facts, evidence, and common-sense solutions. Let's work together to ensure that our elections are free, fair, and accessible to all eligible voters regardless of their background or beliefs. This is John Oliver, signing off.